Welcome everybody to a, another session in our Women Lead Online Forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas, I'm your host today, and today we have a subject matter expert in the hot seat who was willing to say, yeah, go ahead and ask me anything. So our session today will last for about an hour, maybe a little bit under, and if you've joined us with video, you'll be able to see our guests and our attendees alike. Questions and comments are always welcome. And if you have something you'd like to contribute anonymously, just put it in the chat to me and I'd be happy to share it for you. So our topic today is, man, timely, uh, if there ever was one. And it's, uh, it's called Coronavirus, an Unwelcome House Guest. And, and I'm, I'm sure I'm like you, this is a most unwelcome house guest. <laughs> But I'm really excited to introduce today's subject matter expert, Eva Venari, uh, who knows all about taking care of your immune system and, uh, and how to give us some really practical tips on how to, to get through this and come out of this um, hopefully well and whole. So let me tell you just a little bit about her. Eva is the founder and the CEO of the Elevate Institute, a cutting edge health coaching firm specializing in empowering driven professionals like all of us to take charge of our bodies and our health. She's the creator of Reveal Optimal Health Intensive that lets you understand exactly what your body needs to heal and rejuvenate so you can continue bringing your vision to the world. So I'm gonna just hand this on over to you, Eva, and, and I'd like you to tell all of us that are listening and those that will be listening to this in the replay later on, um, what specifically made you want to, to bring your message to, to all of us right now at this particular time? I see a lot of fear around what if I get it? Yeah. Am I doing the right things? Am I taking care? Because there's so much confusion. Yeah. How is it spread? How long does it last on surfaces? Should I wear a mask? Should I wear gloves? Should I go to the grocery store? Should I order out? Should I, <laughs> what am I doing? Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking for me, my perspective is so confident about my body's fortitude, my immune system. I've been working, I've been doing this work for the better part of a decade, been searching out problems related to my own autoimmune disorders before that, that led me to the work uh, in, in, in the Elevate Institute. And for, for years, for many years, I spent thousands of dollars going to doctor to doctor and not finding answers that were cures, but band-aids. And, and the part that I'm responding to today is, are you looking for band-aids to help improve your immune system? Do you even know what to do to improve your immune system? And if you do know, is it working? And can yeah. you feel as confident as I do that if I step outside my front door, I'm okay? Because it's not a matter of if you get exposed to a bacteria or a virus or a parasite or a <laughs> mm -hmm. anything else mm -hmm. that compromises us. It's not an if. It's a win, and the question is, how well will your body recover from it? And that's how I want everybody to feel. I want that confidence to be embodied in each one of us rather than living in fear. And the last thing I want to say about that is that when you live in fear, that fearfulness raises a level of um, stress in the body that mm -hmm. reduces your immune system. So we can talk more about all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's really true. And, you know, I, I've seen a lot of feet of people saying, um, man, I've never washed my hands so much in my life, or, you know, I've never used <laughs> Why sanitizer not? so much in my life. And you're like, well, that's scary. scary. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to know that. Yeah, TMI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i saw a meme the other day that was so funny it says now that we've got hand washing down let's talk about car signals <laughs> yeah. yeah what else can we fix <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so this is very timely and, and, and i i love being able to share this information and i think there's a lot of misinformation out there an awful lot of fads uh, people want to follow take this you know specialty pillar drug and i'm like mm, that's not 
that's not something that's long long term it's not sustainable or try this new fandangled diet and maybe go vegan and i'm like that's also not sustainable for everybody um Mm -hmm. and there's no if you can do it with no drugs then that's what i'm all about yeah yeah that's great um my sister is a a scientist and uh, when people started using hand sanitizers a lot you know years ago even she just was like no this is just this is just so wrong you know you shouldn't be doing this and she would get on me about it you know and stuff because you know she said um that it breaks down your immune system so i'm with with hand sanitizers being freaking everywhere right now you know what what do you say about that and with that being the the um recommendation from everybody that we use use them no i i i don't own any (laughs) (laughs) i don't don't own any you know um okay the other thing i saw was a a wonderful meme it says something about the commercials in the night in in 2030 are going to be like and that's how it was written like if you've been overly exposed to hand sanitizers, um, Clorox bleach wipes, and you know other other chemicals to help clean out your environment due to the coronavirus outbreak in 2020, you may be compensated. You know, and I, I, I post, I reposted it, and I said, look, this is real. We can overexpose ourselves to chemicals, and that buildup, just like anything else, if you swing too far to one direction, it's an accumulative effect on the body, and you, we don't. We don't pee it out. It's not through the normal exit systems, you know, like we're on an airplane. It, it, it's, it stores in the body. And when we store those chemicals, the unnatural chemicals uh, from a wonderful chemical revolution of the 1950s, all those chemicals that remain and continue to be part of our daily lives, we're exposed to them. The more we're exposed to them, the body builds up a, a, that in accumulation in our tissues Mm-hmm. It creates inflammation. And isn't that a buzzword for today? Yeah. And not just today. I'm talking about today's era. You know, everybody mm-hmm. seems to be very aware of inflammation. So what does that cause? Well, over time, it causes what I had, chemical sensitivity. And that means I couldn't be in a public space where somebody was smoking anything, whether it was a natural thing or not, a clove, a, you know, cigarette, a, um, uh, even uh marijuana and any of those things they bothered my senses because the um experience of them were, were so acute i couldn't escape it i couldn't be around people who wore perfume or had cologne on i was like wow i can't even be in this waiting room around mm-hmm. these people i would have to go up to the person um who was the receptionist and say look i can't be in this room i'll be outside here's my phone number call me when the doctor's ready to see me that was how i I couldn't be in a laundry mat mm-hmm. because the sound was one sensitivity I couldn't handle with kids and people running around and all of that, but also the smell of the laundry detergents and the softeners and the supplies, those things bothered me. So you can develop a sensitivity to chemicals if we are around them too much. So mm-hmm. just wash your hands. And I actually go through, this is something that I work with with my clients is to detox the house from cleaning supplies like Clorox bleach is not healthful Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, it lowers your immune system too if you are around it for too long think about it chlorine a form of it was used to gas in world war ii and and -hmm. kill people Mm -hmm. so i don't recommend using it so um, let, let me stop you there, um, Eva, yeah. and, and maybe back up just a little bit. And why don't you give us your, your story? Like, oh, how yeah. did you discover your, your particular sensitivities and all of that? Well, just by, uh, in the experience of my body getting worse and worse over time, I had undiagnosed and unrecognized depression from teenage years. Mm-hmm. And it was blown off and dismissed as that's normal moodiness for a teenager and that turned into uh, autoimmune disorders where i ended up with scarlet fever at the age of 20 shortly after who gets that anymore right so shortly after i ended up uh getting married and i discovered that my reproductive system was out of balance so by 20 i was married 21 i had a miscarriage by 22 i was diagnosed infertile Mm. And not knowing what was causing all of this, both my myself and I'm like, well, 
there must be something wrong with me. Did I get a lemon of a body? And um, am I forever going to be in this way? Am I asked the doctors, why is this happening to me? Their answers were, and I quote, we don't know. Mm-hmm. It wasn't, we don't know yet. It wasn't, you know, it was just, we don't know. And that, that told me I, a signal medicine is is not what's going to help me it's going to be something else and i didn't know what that something else was i just had this feeling Mm -hmm. that if you are we're all designed the same way you know it's like at some point in time i got tired of hearing the doctors excuse away well you um are very active you know i was i was in track and i i ran a lot and i was a gymnast and i played volleyball i was very very physically active and they kept saying well physically active young adults they they have problems with their reproductive systems. It tends to be normal. And then they would say, well, it's because you just got married. And, oh, well, it's because you just had a miscarriage. Oh, well, it's because you just got a divorce. Eventually that led to a divorce. And mm-hmm. um, I says, time out. Everybody has stress. Why is my body not handling it as well as people around me? What are they doing differently? Or what's going on with my body that's so different? And I mm-hmm. just kept thinking, we're all designed perfectly. That was a belief that I had. We're designed to overcome illness. We're designed to heal. If we give our body what it needs, it'll heal Mm -hmm. itself. This is a very Eastern thought for, I don't know where I picked up that idea, but I held on to it when I found it and I just decided I'm going to follow this. Mm -hmm. And eventually my imbalances left untreated by doctors uh, because I didn't want to take the medications. I felt they would just band-aid me. I uh, continue to raise my kids and live in a, a highly stressed environment where raising those two small kids, they were, that I had no choice. Like you raise the kids, you go to work, that was your deal. Mm-hmm. And my health kept getting worse. So for the next 16 years, from 20 until 36, I kept searching what could be going on. And my health compl- continues to deplete, mm-hmm. diagnosed eventually with uh, chronic fatigue, anxiety, insomnia, depression, fibromyalgia, itchy skin, heart palpitations, <laughs> short-term memory loss, <laughs> IBS. Did I mention that? Um, yeah, the, the list, hypothyroidism, the list is so long, I can't remember them all. They've become a, a past item. They've become a memory. And I do remember this, though. I was blessed with insomnia up at 3 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm having this idea, I've got to find out what's going on with me. And I decided I'm just going to put every single one of those things that I just mentioned, plus all of the rest. I have 30 different symptoms and diagnoses, including clinical sensitivity, Mm -hmm. put them into a search string. And I came across an article talking about mineral balancing in the body, what it would look like. And it started to describe, you're going to feel like this. You're going to have adrenal burnout. You're going to have low thyroid. You're going to have itchy skin. And I was like, what is going on here? This is exactly my experience. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will experience one or two or just a small cluster of those things. Well, I was, like I said, blessed to have them all. (laughs) 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 And um, to look at me today is like, really? I I was a shell of a person. My skin was gray. I couldn't, my hair wasn't quite this textured. You know, there's, there's things that were definitely different about me. I couldn't grow my hair, couldn't grow my nails long. There was it was just, I couldn't. Mm -hmm. And, um, I decided, well, this looks like my answer. And so I started to talk with practitioners that did hair mineral analysis. And that's what I decided I'm going to try. And it was the first thing that I tried every other fad diet and trendy, you know, supplement book and everything else. Uh, none of them could get me past 30 days of feeling good. Mm -hmm. I would revert. And so how I decided to do this for a living was it worked. It worked for me. And then I decided I'm going to become a practitioner for myself and for my family. I hadn't thought about hanging on a shingle. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that having a business for this wasn't really the main focus initially. Right. I was in a whole other industry. I mean, I worked with natural stone and I was an architectural rep and I was out in the world talking to people. It was a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. But um, by the time I was certified, um, I had a reason that came upon my path to hang the shingle. And that reason was my ex-husband passed away. So he was 45 years old. And two weeks before he passed from a heart attack, I was on the phone with him. Mm -hmm. And he starts to complain to me about 
what's going on with him physically. I got heart prolapse, hepatitis C. Uh, doctor says I have iron toxicity and I just was diagnosed with diabetes. And I'm thinking to myself, after all the training that I just went through, all of this makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. They're related. Autoimmune disorders, you know, toxins cause that. You know, if you don't get rid of the toxins build up in your body, mineral imbalances, all of those things create a lower immune system. Mm -hmm. So as he's telling me this, I, I go, you know what? I just became certified in, in, in this mineral analysis. Why don't you send me some of your hair? We'll figure this out. The response, I will never forget. He laughed at me and he says, no, no, no. My doctors have me. I'm fine. Wow. I'm on medication. Yeah. So I didn't get to him in time. Anyways, it would have taken more than two weeks to get him sorted, but it was two weeks later. He was in the hospital trying to take care of some kidney stones and his body just couldn't handle the process of whatever they gave him and had a massive heart attack and passed. And after that phone call, receiving it saying you, you're, you're being informed, your ex-husband passed away, sorted him out. That was July of 2011. Mm -hmm. September 1st of 2011, I opened my doors. I said, yeah. all right, people need to know they have an option. And ever since then, it's been my mission to empower people to make their own decisions about healthcare, not just take what doctors say as the golden rule, but simply mm -hmm. take it into an advisement so we can, we can really truly hold our own health. And that's what, that's what this is all about. Yeah, yeah. I agree um, that too often uh, they want to prescribe medication and they, um, they want to put you on something because that's all that they know to do. That's how they've been right. educated and that's all that yes. they know. And, yeah. um, you know, it, every once in a while, you know, you run across a, a doctor. I, I happen to have a wonderful family doctor who always how are you sleeping? Are you exercising right? What are you eating? You know, she goes through this whole litany of things, you know, and, and to be honest, there's times I'm like, just give me something, you know, <laughs> Why do you always we, we get impatient. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but, but she's, she's really good at, you know, at, at making sure she's covered all of those things first. That's where she starts first, but she's, uh, she's a runner. She's uh, very active. Her entire family is very active, you know, and, um, the the funny this is a funny side story but her um her sister is a psychiatrist so she's a physician her sister's a psychiatrist and um you know a few years back i was seeing her sister as a, a therapist for me af after my son had passed away and i was seeing her for some depression you know issues and so forth and um and she prescribed pharmaceuticals for me which i was I, I don't care what people do. If that's what they want to do, that's totally fine. I was very uncomfortable with it. Um, and, and her, her sister, my GP, I don't think realized that it was her sister who had prescribed these for me. And she was, she says, you know, you got to, you, you just need to, I'm not going to tell you not to take these, but I want to set an expectation for what it's not going to do for you, which, you know, I was really grateful for because it was a, it was a, a it was a setting of expectations. You know, it's not a happy pill. It's not a, you know, get well quick kind of thing, you know? So um, that's, that's about it. I mean, I, I don't take anything, you know, really, not, like I said, not that I'm opposed to it, but I just, I've been very fortunate, you know, to be, to be really healthy. I'm so sorry about your ex-husband. That's a, that's a very sad story. It, it's, it's sad for him that he wasn't around to watch the girls grow up. They're now in their twenties and, um, you know, living life as productive parts of society. So yeah, yeah, yeah that's the, that's really the sad, the sadness in the story, but it was the reason why I decided to start the business and the, after effects, you know, being, being able, as a result, I've been able to help hundreds of people all over the world, mm -hmm. um, feel, feel better. And oftentimes by the time they're knocking on my door, they've tried everything like I did. They've tried everything. They've knocked on every other doctor's door. They don't want to take the medications anymore. If they've been on them, they're like, I don't like how they make me feel. And it does well, it just to the point of what we're talking about today, it lowers your immune system to take medications. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Well, that's, now that's, that's an interesting thing that, um, that it it lowers your immune system when you take medication. What do you have people who come to you that, um, for, 
first of all, I guess, why do they come to you? What, what are some of the symptoms that they're having that makes them think possibly they have a suppressed um, immune system? It's a combination of things, but they'll generally find me when um, it, it, it's a cluster uh, of symptoms and it's frustration. I've tried going to the doctor. I've tried um, taking medications. I've tried my diet. I feel worse. I can't find anything. I feel very confused about what my body's doing. I don't know that what I'm doing is working and they want something that's well, it's clinical, and, and because I do the hair test, that's very clinical, and I get to analyze and see progress of what's going on with the person, um, and I don't want to guess anymore, and, and that wanting, it, it's, it's one thing to have an autoimmune disorder that is being proclaimed by medical practitioners uh, everywhere that's incurable. Um, when you're faced with that, and the doctor says to you, you're always going to have this, you're always going to feel that way. At some point, you could believe him, or you could say, I don't accept that. Mm -hmm. And those people, when they, especially when they hear my story, or they go they, you know, on Google again, like me, I'm blessed with insomnia, and they find an article or something that describes what I'm talking about, and that's when they reach out. They're like, oh, you have, just like I did, you have what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And they're hoping that I can help them. And I can hear it when I, when I talk to them on the phone or even in a, a case like this and somebody calls in and they ask questions every time the, the result is, wow, I feel so much better just by talking to you because I believe my, like you now, my body can, can support me and I can get better. It's just now uh, the process and how to do it is mm -hmm. in front of me and they get to choose whether or not they want to do it. Yeah. And there's, there's ways you can do that uh, even through, without the, the uh, reveal program um, there's things that everybody can do. And that's why I wanted to do this now. It's like, it's going to take a month for me to take somebody's hair sample and then get from their personalized program that supports their immune system. What can we do right now from home? If they're watching this live, you know, mm -hmm. or if, if they, within the next few days, what can I do? And mm -hmm. that's really, th those are the things that we can, we can hone in on. Yeah. That's awesome. So what can people do right now? Yeah. Um, the, the biggest thing is to, well, we're, we're all having to isolate. That's fine. We're washing our hands. But I want to talk about rest <laughs> mm -hmm. and sleep. So worrying too much will keep you from getting sleep. So if you meditate or you can't meditate or you read a book, something, make sure that you're getting your sleep. And that helps to improve your it's again, everything I've talked about is holistic. So it is sleep is a rejuvenator. Mm -hmm. If we don't go to sleep, the body can't rejuvenate period. Mm -hmm. Done deal. So any damage that you're exposing yourself to, um, any sort of virus, any bacteria, anything that you're using the hand sanitizers for during the day, it's just not going to work as well unless we get our sleep. Mm -hmm. And then there's rest. So we're home we can get restless, even if you're streaming Netflix all day long mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> or putting together new marketing messages, whatever you're doing for yourself or your business, um, to make sure that you put time in the day, half hour, 15 minutes in between each of those things so that you're not sitting for more than an, an hour and a half, like mm -hmm. 90 minutes at a time and switch up what you do in your daily routine. Continue to do, um, some sort of activity. Uh, there's a lot of people right now offering free movement exercises, dance classes online. Take advantage, use them. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep mm -hmm. your body moving. That helps with circulation and eat your meals, eat your food. <laughs> Don't forget. People forget these basic things. And, yeah. and it's like, what can we do? Just do that. Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, eat your breakfast, your lunch, and your dinner. And if, if mm -hmm. you're doing that, that fasting where you're doing just two meals a day, eat them and then take your supplements with it. And a lot of people are like, oh, I'm taking my oregano oil. Great. Take your oregano oil. It's not a supplement. And mm -hmm. a supplement is meant to supplement an already healthy diet. But um, like, well, then the question is, well, what do we take? Yeah. And I, I wrote an article about, you know, the 10 things that you can do to boost your immune system. Um, it's on, it's on my Facebook page, but I can, I can share that here afterwards, um, mm -hmm. as well. But on there is a list of supplements that are good for every human <laughs> who's able to swallow a, a supplement pill. Uh, and I would recommend reviewing, reviewing those, but it's basically it's some selenium, some vitamin D, um, 
some endo AC. Uh, it's an AC multivitamin. Too many people think that taking vitamin C in high quantities is what they need to do. Mm -hmm. And this is where I, I can geek out about this and I don't know how deep we want to go, but I just want to say if we talk about minerals and how they relate to each other, calcium in a high dose by itself will actually deplete your other very powerful um, immune system supporter and that's zinc. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and so there's a balance of different minerals to take with it. And that's what I talk about in the article. So don't just guess, I take it. And then some omega-3s. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> all of those things can physically help support your body with, uh, in addition to your food and taking care of yourself. The last thing that is super important that no one thinks about is, I, I hear this often. It's like, well, I'm not going to worry about this virus because um, I don't get sick. Mm -hmm. That's a red flag to me. Anybody who tells me I don't get sick that means their body is never fighting off whatever they're exposed to. So huh. if you've lost, yeah, if you've lost your ability to get a fever, that fever is what kills viruses mm -hmm. and bacteria, right? Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> if you're not killing them, what are they doing? They're in your body banging around causing inflammation and problems. Huh. I, yeah, I see it all. <laughs> I know. Yeah, wow. <laughs> It's a new way of thinking. We're not taught these things. And when I found them out after, you know, this whole body of work of mineral balancing covers that. Give your body what it needs. It heals itself. Mm -hmm. So how do you holistically raise your body temperature if you don't have enough vital energy to create a fever to kill mm -hmm. off a virus? How can you do that mechanically uh, without a drug? And the best way is through sauna. Through what? Sauna. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Like sitting in the sauna. At sitting in the sauna. Yeah. 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 We can't get to the the spas, or we can't get to right now, anyways. Right. But we can't. We can't. There are um, inexpensive near infrared saunas that you can pick up or build yourself mm -hmm. um, that raise your body temperature, increase your circulation, mm -hmm. raise your human growth hormone, raise your temperature help you sweat out all of the toxins that we've built up over the years. Um, so many different things and benefits to a sauna, especially the near infrared sauna. So those mm -hmm. are the ones I recommend highly and mm -hmm. they work really well to kill off. So anytime I have a cold, I feel it coming on or if I come down with the flu, which is rare, but I, I came down with one just a few months ago mm -hmm. and got into the sauna three to five times a day for about 10 minutes at a time and let my body go through a natural fever, uh, or I should say an unnatural fever, <laughs> mm -hmm. raising the body temperature. Yeah. And I was able to overcome it more quickly than others who picked mm -hmm. up the same bug. Yeah. So, well, yeah. you know, the, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit more about that, um, that idea of sweating out toxins. Um, I used to, when I lived in San Diego, I had a friend that had a, a day spa and she did um, the, you know, where she would wrap you in, plastic and then put you in a, you know, like a foil cocoon, basically, you know, for a, several hours. Um, and I, I would do that, you know, probably twice a year and felt so amazingly good after doing that, you know, because you were sweating out all the toxins, even though I didn't didn't feel like I had them, you know, like there, there, it wasn't like I was sick or I wasn't sick <laughs> as the case may be or, or whatever, but it just was amazing how, how much better I felt when I didn't even realize I hadn't been feeling well, you know? Exactly. So I was asked that a very similar question to that point the other day, can you feel Zen, happy, comfortable, and still be out of balance and have stress, the toxin stress inside your body? Yes, mm -hmm. because we get used to it. Yeah. And we draw that little line, the status quo becomes the normal. That, that normal is what's comfortable. Mm -hmm. Even if it's like the, the difference between feeling really good, like right after having that treatment, right? Mm -hmm. Then you remember, oh gosh, I didn't realize what a difference that makes and I forgot that I could feel like this new way all the, mm -hmm. all the time. And you can, you can feel like that. And that's uh, a really good point. Yeah. yeah. So with the, the hair analysis that you do, um, 
is that is that like a one and done thing or is that something you should have done like maybe every couple of years or is your body going to change i guess after you, you think you've gotten balanced and then can you get out of balance again you can there there's a, so let me answer, answer the, the first question it depends on how out of balance you are what imbalances were passed to you from mother to child in the womb or not born perfect like we would like to believe mm -hmm. and then whatever your environment is through which your body has been raised how you grow up mm -hmm. uh, the food that you ate you know the electromagnetic fields you're around the cell towers you're around now and the, if your food is microwaved all of these things take a toll on your nutrition mm -hmm. and how your body was built so <clears throat> The process and the magic in the process is you only give your body what it needs to heal the outer layer of metabolism. And that outer layer is kind of like what your body's done to band-aid over the previous layer of metabolism. Mm -hmm. In simple terms, it, it builds up over time, your metabolism does, like layers in an onion. Uh -huh. And each layer has its own personality of problems, toxin buildup, uh, traumas from being exposed to mold, uh, some sort of imbalance with I got I got mono and now that mono virus is stuck you know as an irritant inside that layer of metabolism. Your body won't heal that layer until you heal all the layers outside of it. Kind of like you know how when you get a boil develop way down deep in, into the layers of your skin, mm -hmm. it won't it won't heal until it comes to the surface of your skin. It's a gross example, but everybody gets that one. Yeah. <laughs> so we want to get down. Yeah, it is gross, but it, it works. The, the visual is there. Um, so the idea is the hair analysis gives us the information that's perfect for that um, and to create your personalized supplement program. Heals that outer layer of metabolism. That outer layer then reveals away the uh, new layer underneath mm -hmm. and you keep doing this so i retest the hair every four months okay. over a period of one to two years that's enough time to get down into the nitty-gritty that foundation of the body and rebuild it mm -hmm. and you can eat well all you want to at the surface level of the outer layer of metabolism but until you start to replace and displace the toxins that your body's built up over time you'll never do it with food alone it has to be um you know, it's, it's a lot of supplements. And so people look at them and they go, why is there so many supplements? Because we have to do all of the work to mm -hmm. get past what you're currently needing to get through today. Mm -hmm. The energy you need for today is today's food. You need more than that yeah. to roll back the hands of time and get to a new foundation. Yeah. So it, it takes a while. Um, everybody should go through the process at least once in their life, get rid of the toxins, especially if you're looking to have children because whatever I said, whatever your imbalances are as a mom uh, to be, you're going to pass them to your children. So you can prep your body to be more imbalanced so that when you have your babies, their babies are born with balanced mm -hmm. nutrition. Yeah. And then oh. they have less things to overcome. The things that we think are often, oh, it runs in my family. Um, no, they're just imbalances that are passed from mom <laughs> to child yeah, yeah. in the womb. Right. And those are not genetic. They're congenial. So that's a, a, a big distinction. And your immune system is definitely wrapped up into that, in, that set of imbalances. Mm -hmm. um, the last question you asked, I'm not remembering what was the part of it. Can it happen again? Can you get out of balance again? Yes, you can be exposed to, uh, just like you can have a car accident, you know, you have a perfect car and now you get into a car accident. Now you've got to take the car to repair. Um, will you ever need to repair the car again if you get another car accident? Mm -hmm. So what's a car accident in terms of your body's health? Um, mold, exposure, um, a major virus that is like mono and even the, the uh, coronavirus, mm -hmm. those are heavier on the body and the immune system and, and, and the overall what is the body needing to do in order to take care of that mm -hmm. and what is it what is it pulling what other engines or systems in the body is are, are we having to pull from energetically the physical energy of, of the different systems in our body in order to overcome right. and that creates imbalances just in and of itself mm -hmm. it becomes a dent in your car so to speak yeah and so once you've gone through something, um, even like sepsis, you know, if you've been exposed to something really serious, if you've had cancer, um, if you've had um, liver disease, or if you've had a, a surgery, all of those things are impacts on the body's system. If you've had to take a series of drugs for something, drugs aren't all bad. 
I just don't like taking them for life. Right. You know, right. so if you've had a series of something that came up that was alarming, that affected you, that created PTSD, even something in, in an emotional way, mm-hmm. that's a ding in your metaphorical body's car. Mm-hmm. And it need, I would go back and then retest and see what you need to fill in the gap so that it doesn't continue to cause problems in the future. Okay. So yeah. a few years ago, um, I did a, my husband and I both did a hair analysis, but it was looking for food sensitivities, not food allergies, but the food that you eat that makes you not feel good, you know, and there were some things that showed up on it that were like, oh, that's interesting. I've never noticed that I didn't feel well when I ate that. And there were other things that it was like, oh, I totally, yeah, I totally get that. When I eat that, I feel like something's sitting on my chest or, or what have you. Um, does, does your, uh, does your method show that as well? Or is it showing, cause this one did not show anything about, um, deficiencies in terms of, um, supplements or vitamin deficiencies or anything like that. Yeah. It's, it's more of a trend idea. So what I see is on a holistic level, so it's the whole, the whole body's ability to create new quality cells. Mm-hmm. How well is your digestion working? The digestion is what drives your ability to create new quality, new cells, better you. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can see if a person's having difficulty breaking down their foods, Pro- protein synthesis is what I can see clearly on a test. And your overall, um, the immune system's effectiveness, how well you're processing sugars. If your glandulars are functioning overall, not just whether or not something's in the blood, like what you see in a blood test, Mm -hmm. but this gives you a more complete, uh, a more complete picture. Are you creating glandulars of all kinds that, and and glands run the body, you know, Mm -hmm. and is it being carried by the blood? Is it oxidized? Is is it getting, getting those um, hormones to the cell structure? And is the Mm -hmm. cell structure actually utilizing it. We, I can see those engines, all three of yeah. them. Okay. So it's not just what's in the blood. And for, when it comes to food allergies, I, have, I had a gentleman come to me, worked out, had, had a, a, a workout body. And he goes, I, I just need help with my allergies. And he had food allergies, like you're mentioning. And I says, well, I, I'm not going to be able to test for individual allergies. You'll have to do other tests for that. I says, but really, we're not talking about allergies. We're talking about the environment inside your body that's allowing for those allergies to be there. Mm-hmm. And that sat with him for a minute. He goes, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. And I says, well, think about how moss grows really well in a swamp. You know, a coronavirus will hit somebody and, and cause an effect of death really well in a swampy body, right? Mm -hmm. So just to be frank, and if you have a body that is, or I should say a swamp, moss is going to grow so well. If you get into a little boat in the swamp and you go through and you cut out all of the moss, you're like, okay, now I'm moss free. I'm fine. You're not thinking right. Mm -hmm. Getting rid of your allergy is not a band-aid effect. It's, it's It's going to need creating a whole new foundation. Change it's like, the environment. Like getting rid of a symptom instead of the cause. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, so if we can make the environment now a, a desert, the desert doesn't support moss. Mm-hmm. So you create a fortified body that fights off infection and fights off, you know, viruses easily yeah. or with more energy. You're going to be less affected than others. And that's, that's really what it comes down to. It's like, let's create an environment of a fortified body, the Fort Knox that I was talking about. Yeah. 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 You have, you have fabulous metaphors. <laughs> <laughs> that really makes a lot of sense. <laughs> I've been doing this the better part of a decade. It's taken me a bit to figure them out, but I have them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wanted to just pause a second. And, and so if, uh, Kathy, if you've got some questions, you know, please feel free to unmute yourself and and ask, uh, feel free to ask Eva anything about this. I could ask her a billion questions, so, but I want to make sure that you have a chance to as well. No, it's been very interesting. Um, You know, I've kind of been in a lot of these discussions, of course, the last couple of weeks with many people. Um, 
but no, I think I don't have any questions. I just find it very interesting and good information. Good. So thanks Great. for that. Mm -hmm. Well, feel free. Yeah. Um, you know, Eva, I have a question yeah. about the way that that um, that we take supplements. So I have a, a gag reflex, you know, so um, I had to stop taking calcium pills and go to calcium gummies, you know, because I, um, I really want to keep up my calcium regimen. I, that's important. My grandmother had osteoporosis. My mom's sister had osteoporosis. So that's been something that's kind of been drilled into me, you know, from the time I was a kid. I know, I know mm -hmm. what you're thinking. <laughs> Pass from mother to child in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm I'm careful about that one, but I um I can't take big pills. So does it matter what medium, what what me delivery method, I guess, that you get supplements in, or or what? Uh, well, so there there's a there's a, a beautiful discussion around that, and that I've, I've had to have with many people because this has come up before. Uh, people say, "Oh, I put the pill in the back of my throat, and it causes me to, you know, gird." Um, and I'm like, "All right, so you can you can crush up the pill and put it into, you know, a food, a soft food of some kind." Mm -hmm. It may change the taste of the food, and often it does, but you get it down, and you don't have to worry about the pill. The other option is there's liquid. Mm -hmm. So there's liquid forms of things. The question then comes down to the quality, and the, the certain supplements that I, I recommend, I recommend them because they're high quality. They're chelated minerals, mm -hmm. which means they're easy to absorb in, in, in through the digestive system, and they displace toxins and nutritional imbalances at the cellular level, the storage level, which is different than taking something. Um, a lot of the grocery store brands are not chelated. They are uh, glucosinate or something else. Mm -hmm. And that just is the same thing as, here's another metaphor for you, um, drinking a cup of coffee to get your energy as opposed mm -hmm. to having a really good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. So the chelated minerals are like the good night's sleep, okay. right? A lot of the gluconate minerals, they just simply give you enough energy to, to bam, for the day. Mm -hmm. They don't correct imbalances, and that's my goal here. Mm -hmm. But for the day-to-day, -day, yeah, look for the chelated minerals. Yes, they cost more, but you're, at least it's not just a pee additive now. You know, right. it's something that your body's actually doing something with. And mm -hmm. um, the lower intake of sugar we can do right now, the better, because that mm -hmm. also helps to boost your immune system. And a lot of times gummies have some kind of sweetener in them. That's the only thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So maybe, maybe a liquid is a better option for you in particular. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense. Wow. So this is just so much information. I mean, so much information. So how, how can people, contact you because I, I think that there's going to be a lot of interest in this as especially as this particular situation maybe doesn't doesn't resolve itself you know it, within the next two weeks or you know or by Easter or whatever the magic day is now you know so how can people reach you and um, and what should they be what should they be asking you about yeah I'm such an optimist and so I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself it's going to be over mid-April. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but <laughs> <laughs> that's my hope. Um, so if you're, if you're thinking, I want to boost my immune system right now, um, I, I'll find that link and I'll share it so that we can put it at the bottom for the article on what supplements to take and how much. I also have an immune booster. But if you go to theelevateinstitute.com on the home page, mm -hmm. For those who heard some of the symptoms I talked about, and even, even for you, when you're like, this uh, calcium osteoporosis, guess what? That was one of my things, osteoarthritis. Mm -hmm. um, it, it runs in the family. Maybe, maybe you have an imbalance that you want to address. There's a questionnaire that says, uh, yes, reveal it to me. It's a button on the homepage. Okay. And you can take that questionnaire for free, and it tells you, just by answering these few questions, whether or not you could have an imbalance and what to do to go forward from there. Okay, great. Yeah. So it's theelevateinstitute.com. Com. And can folks call you? Yeah, yeah. There's um, a hotline number that I have. It's 408-800-7353. I'll say that again. 408 800 
1-800-273-7353. Perfect. All right. Well, any last words for us, Eva, before we, uh, before we let you get off the hot seat? I want to really emphasize this is not a time to be scared or fearful. It's more of a time to take charge and um, take an account mm -hmm. of what you're really, really be honest with yourself. Am I taking care of myself in a way that is not just going to get me through the coronavirus, but into a healthy longevity? Mm -hmm. You know, what's great about that is uh, fear makes people feel impotent. You know, it makes them feel like they're out of control. And if you feel like you can do something about taking care of yourself and preparing yourself, um, I think that just does a lot to alleviate that fear. Fear is not good for anyone. Yeah. No. Well, thank you so much, Eva, for coming on and, and agreeing to, uh, to, to be our subject matter expert here in the hot seat. And I know that the information that you've shared today and that people will be listening to in the replays um, is just gonna be, encouraging and helpful and and hopeful for people so i appreciate that very much um, this will be posted on the connected women of influence website probably within the next few days please feel free to go out and look for that replay share it with with folks um, and and do something good for yourself take care thank you